Nintendo Switch eShop games worth buying. How many times have I said those words to you guys? 270 games I have reviewed in this series alone. They're getting dangerously close to 300. If it's your first time here, hello, welcome. My name is Wood. Hit the subscribe, maybe even the like button. Let me tell you what I'm doing today. I have dived into the depths of the eShop and pulled out 10 amazing, incredible, 10 star game worth buying and playing. I guess I know the eShop is filled with so much shovelware that sometimes the gems, they get buried. Needless to say, every game in this video today is a banger. And there's such a wide variety of games, I'm sure you'll find something that you'll love. Oh, buy one of these. I'll buy one of those. <laughs> I gotta buy one of these. Hold on, how much stuff are you buying? Oh, no, it's okay. I've got honey on my phone now, so I'm saving so much money. Yeah, I use honey all the time too, but pretend I don't know anything about it. Tell me. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, sure. To put it simply, honey automatically searches for promo codes so you don't have to. If I were shopping for this sick gaming PC right now, I would go to checkout and honey just pops up. And with one easy click, it's applying all the coupon codes it can find and saving me the most amount of money as possible. I've used Honey to buy clothes online, tech and equipment for my YouTube channel, even video games, and we've had food delivered that I've saved money on with Honey. Technically, you could probably buy Honey, like real, like the sticky kind, and save money on it using Honey. The best part is, if you've already got Honey on your computer, Mine's over there. I don't know why I pointed. Your computer's probably in a different place. Now you can get it on your iPhone, which is great because usually when I want to buy something, I got to wait till I'm sitting my happy little butt down at my PC. But now I can do it anywhere. Like right here on the toilet. I'm not actually using the toilet. That would be gross. Or right here outside. I'm buying meat patties, which is great because I don't actually have any. Ooh. So whether it's just a few dollars or hundreds of dollars, saving money is always a rush. You gotta buy something and it's just magically cheaper. So if you wanna experience that on your computer or on your phone, you can for free at joinhoney.com forward slash beat-em-ups. That's joinhoney.com forward slash beat-em-ups. I tried to recline and I fell off the chair. There is no better way to put it. If you love Animal Crossing, you're probably gonna love Cozy Grove. It follows many similar beats and at a huge 40 hour main campaign and even more when you start completing side quests and just spending time in the beautifully animated world, you'll find more than your $15 of value in this charming game. Cozy Grove is a life sim about everyday life on a haunted ever changing island. You'll build a camp, make new friends and set about bringing color back to the land by helping out with quests and decorating the entire island. You check back in every real life day to find new items available or new areas to explore. It uses procedurally generated techniques to keep the world feeling alive and it truly does feel cozy. The wonderfully hand-drawn art style speaks for itself here. As you play, you progress through the story by helping these ghosts with their requests. In turn, that improves your home camp, grows the island even bigger, and increases your storage. So you'll have more space while you're out collecting shells, fish, wood. No, not me. Like, tree wood. Very different. Once you've done everything you can story-wise in a day, you'll have to take a night-long break or just start decorating the island more. And don't expect an Animal Crossing level of content or things to do. This is a cute little indie game that costs a fraction of the price. And with that in mind, it's perfect for picking up for an hour or so a day and getting cozy with some new friends. For now, it's time to pick up the action of <laughs> Out of every game in this video today, it might surprise you to find out I have spent the most amount of time playing Grindstone. It's not my favorite, I just couldn't stop playing it. I found it on sale on the eShop a few weeks back, but it turns out it was actually released back in 2020, and I guess I missed it. See, it even happens to me. I also have a rule that in these videos, a game cannot have a physical release to qualify, as they are supposed to be eShop games worth buying. That said, typically when I review these games, they are so good and end up getting so much love that a physical comes later on anyway. So I'm just gonna 
pretend like I found this game back when it released. Grindstone's premise is super simple. You slash through colorful colored creatures chaining together the largest combos possible. You can only connect through one color at a time, but there are ways to jump to other colors to keep that colorful blood flowing. You can pick up a gem or kill a high leveled enemy and that allows you to bounce to a new color. Chain as much as you can together, not only for a bigger reward, but also for that satisfying feeling that comes from wiping out an entire screen of enemies. As the game progresses, it throws more and more at you, like obstacles in the terrain, creatures, attacks, forcing you to be careful with where you end a turn, otherwise you'll take damage unless you have an item. Bigger boss enemies that require you to build up a certain combo before you can chain onto them, and just so much more. The game is filled with extra content, like a weapon store to buy upgradable shields, swords, and special abilities, and there's also a daily grind mode, and that's where I spent most of my time getting addicted. I wanted to hit the top spot so bad. Many days I came top five, but finally, after several attempts, one day I finally got the top spot, and that is my new claim to fame. And let's not forget to mention the art style. The characters are so wonderfully drawn and animated, I assumed this game was based on some kind of cartoon network TV show I hadn't seen, but nope, it's a completely original work. I think it needs to become a TV show because I would watch that. Oh, sorry, I'm still playing Pokemon Legends Arceus. I'm like a hundred hours in now. I have a lot of shinies. I should probably get back to the video. I don't think anyone should be ashamed about not knowing the first two Oli Oli games existed because I didn't and I don't want to feel ashamed. Or even for not knowing that the new Oli Oli World is technically the third game in a series of incredible 2D skate games. As this new vibrant colorful jump into 3D 2D visuals is a stark difference to where the series began, but incredibly Oli Oli World manages to bring that intense, fast paced and brilliant gameplay that these games were known for and turn it all up to 11. These go to 11. In Oli Oli World you trick, grind, wool run and more across several different biomes with over a hundred moves to master and combine in your battle for the highest score possible. Right away, I was impressed by just the sheer amount of content this game had to offer. The visual art style is so reminiscent of cartoons I love, like Adventure Time and Steven Universe, with these quirky characters and vibrant colors that pop on the screen. The animations are fantastic, especially while skating and pulling off those awesome tricks and flips. And these level designs get insane. More insane than whatever my hair is doing right now. In honor of Oli Oli, what? It was a reverse flip. You'll find yourself holding your breath as you do your best not to screw up your run or while you're pulling off some of these absolutely bananas moves to progress through some of the areas, it truly leaves you feeling like an absolute skate god, god beast. beast. Best part is there's often multiple different paths to take, each with its own hazards and challenges, so it's rewarding to go back through levels and experiencing each different track. Mix that in with the obviously addicting scoring system, but also multiple side quests offered for each course, so you can see why this game was very hard to put down. And the thing I appreciate the most about the game is at the press of a button, you instantly reset back to the start, which is incredible because I screw up a lot. I'm always trying to do more than I probably should, so when I inevitably do stack it, knowing I can instantly try again might be even more satisfying than pulling off some of those insane combos. Okay, so I haven't played the next game. In fact, it's not even installed on my Switch. How could I possibly review it, you might be asking? Well, because Kim played it. So I asked Kim for her review, and I wrote it down, and that's the review I'm gonna give you. Unpacking is a very calming and relaxing game that tells the story of a character's life through the items and rooms you need to organize, with each of the 35 levels revealing more and more about them. So you're literally unpacking this character's life while you are unpacking their life. At the start of each new room, you click on the cardboard boxes and begin placing every item around the new room. Pictures to be hung on the walls, toys to be placed in desks or tucked away in cupboards. Once you've unpacked everything, the game will tell you if anything was put in the wrong place. This only happens a couple of times here or there, and it's just a device used to move the story forward. For the most part, you can spend all day mindlessly organizing books or stacking plates the way that you want them. You have complete creative 
of freedom. Once you complete a level, you move on to the next room and stage in this character's life, starting in their 1997 kid's room, to a college dorm, to their first apartment, and so on. The high-res pixel art style is done really well, and while the background music is great, it's the sound design that really shines. The noise that shuffling around items makes is weirdly satisfying in itself. That's everything that Kim told me, but I've heard really good things about this game and people keep trying to tell me to play it and I will. Okay, yes, technically Loop Hero has a physical too, but it's through the awesome people at Special Reserve Games and it's out of stock right now, so shut up. It counts. I think I'm the only one that cares. You guys just want to hear about games. Loop Hero is a game that at first glance, I did not think I would enjoy. And trust me, after all these years of reviewing all these hundreds of eShop games, I'm the last person to judge a book by its cover anymore. But the graphical style of Loop Hero reminds me of the old DOS games I used to play when I was a kid. And I just didn't think that in 2022, I would be able to get engrossed in the world. But I was totally wrong. Loop Hero is a roguelike game where at the start of each run, you're given a randomized and completely empty loop. As your little stick figure guy starts to march around the loop, it'll run into some small wild creatures. An automated battle will ensue and upon defeating it, you'll be given an item card, either a weapon or armor or hopefully some land or an enemy card. You place those world cards around your loop, creating enemy spawns like spiders, vampires, and so much more. Then environmental cards you can place around like mountains, meadows, and such, and those will give you stat boost. At the start of each new day, the enemy spawn camps will create new enemies that you'll have to battle as you pass through those locations on each loop. But of course, once you beat those enemies, you'll get even stronger weapons, armor, or more world cards to start building more and more until you have a full lush world filled to the brim with monsters, wildlife, and vast biomes. But that's where it lies loop hero's biggest challenge the more that you place around the world the stronger and harder the loops will become and if you've gone overboard placing monster camps you might overwhelm yourself and since you can only end a run at camp if you instead opt to go through one more loop and you just can't make it back safely you will lose almost everything. So it's a very delicate balance and each loop is very different, made even more unique by the different heroes you can unlock. Those heroes come with their own sets of weapon and armors and more. Once you finally do manage to end a run, you can upgrade your home base with items that you found. And if you make it through enough loops, there are big boss battles that will progress the story and those are brutally difficult. Okay. That was a lot, I know, but this is easily one of the most fun and hardest roguelites I have played because it comes down to my own greed. So the hardest part almost isn't even the game. It's trying to beat yourself. Ooh, no, don't leave that in. No, 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 no. As I wrote this next part, I knew I'd be getting kind of emotional right now. So I wrote it in the script. Wow, I'm getting kind of emotional right now. Freddy Fish, Putt Putt, Spy Fox, and Pajama Sam. Several different games, all made by the same team at Humongous Entertainment, and all games that I grew up with. And I'm gonna count all these games as one. All of these games are point and click adventures that are aimed at children from five to eight. Seeming that they all released around that 1994 to 1998 area, it's no surprise that these games were a huge part of my childhood. But all that said, I'm not just throwing them in here as a nice little walk down memory lane to talk about some baby games. No, these games are children's games in the same way that SpongeBob is a children's show or that Shrek is a movie made for kids. Doesn't mean that adults can enjoy them too. All of these games stand the test of time as high quality, fun and engaging point and click adventures filled with incredible art and wonderful animation and even really great voice acting, I do think that anyone could still enjoy these. None of this should be any a surprise though, as most of these games were created by Ron Gilbert, who is a game designing hero of mine. I grew up playing Maniac Mansion and the Monkey Island games too. All of those games that he made were all part of my childhood. I had no idea that he made all of them. The puzzles are so enjoyable to solve and a brilliant touch is that 
every time you play the game, the puzzles differ slightly. In this first Pajama Sam, for example, a lot of the story is based around you finding your mask, flashlight, and lunchbox so you can defeat the darkness. But those items will always be in different locations each time you play, which for a kid is fantastic because you can play the game over and over and over again. Every single new screen or location is filled with small details and hidden secrets. You can click and interact with almost anything around the screen. And that becomes a game in itself. The amount of detail and work that went into these games still blows me away to this day. It's just about the art, the story, the characters, the little details, and the journey. Oh, and of course, the nostalgia. Oh, what's that? Don't you your baby games are too easy for you? Well, <laughs> Then how about something much harder? Ender Lilies. I was 95% sure I already reviewed this game in one of my eShop videos. I don't keep a list of everything I've reviewed. I really should. A fan sent me the list recently on Twitter. If you're watching and could send that back to me, I'd really appreciate it. I need to like save it somewhere. But I did try to Google my own name with Ender Lilies and nothing was coming up. So I guess I didn't do it. Like, whatever. If I did, let's do it again. If you loved Metroid Dread or Hollow Knight and want an even tougher, more brutal Metroidvania to sink your grimy little unbrushed teeth into, then Ender Lilies might be for you. A 2D action platformer set in a dark fantasy world with a super interesting art style that can only be described, I don't know, like hand-drawn paper art that's been animated to bend and move and flex, which when it comes to the weird creatures and monsters in this world, that can be an uncomfortable and eerie sight to behold. As you would expect, you begin the game almost helpless, with almost no abilities available to you, but as the game progresses, you'll find yourself mid-air battling, double jumping, and slashing through anything that stands in your way. The combat really feels different to any other Metroidvania I've played. Lily herself isn't the one attacking, so you can throw out a slash and still continue to freely walk about the battle. The soundtrack is also a standout. Composed and performed by the same classical Japanese group that worked on Ghost in the Shell, Goblin Slayer, and more. But, you know, if you want to watch someone play the game before you decide to buy it, my friend Adam Cole is actually streaming his playthrough on Twitch. It's the Chugs. I'll leave a link down below. Oh, I'm sorry. What's that? You didn't know that AEW's Adam Cole and I were like besties? Oh. I guess you don't watch me on Twitch and see that we recently played Mario Party together. Look, I was fine. It's fine. I don't even know what Game Fairy is. That doesn't count either. Far Lone Sales is an incredible and unforgettable two hour experience that costs $14.99. So I, I, I need you to bear that in mind going into it. I bought this one on sale, which was nice, but the amount of detail and world building crammed into this short runtime might help sway you on justifying the full price if it's not on sale for you right now. In Far, you control a driver of a large land and sea hybrid vehicle as you progress through the post-apocalyptic world in one straight path with no load screens. To control the vehicle, you gotta run around inside it, refilling the fuel, keeping the throttle pressed down, venting the steam so the engine doesn't explode, it can become a frantic mess as you try to manage everything at once, while also stopping to pick up more fuel so that you don't run out, making sure to lower the sails before hitting low bridges or buildings or stopping the engine before you slam into a wall and, you know, have to repair everything or put out fires. You'll also need to face brutal hazardous weather conditions and solve the occasional puzzle area to open up new pathways to continue on your journey. Easily the biggest challenge for me in FAR is trying to take in every environment and location while you're also frantically rushing around the ship. As every few seconds, you'll find yourself in another expansive location with desolate wastelands to beautiful night skies and more. I sat down to play this game thinking I would just start it for a few minutes and ended up finishing the entire thing in one sitting. I was completely engrossed in the game. Okay. What was that? Thankfully, Evertried does not have any kind of physical, so that's progress. More progress than I've been making in Evertried. <laughs> it is the second roguelike game in this video, but it really stands out as a very unique and also brutally hard game in its own way. It's very strategy and puzzle based. The entire map you play on is turn based, as once you make your move, all the enemies and hazards on the map will take their move all at the same time. 
You attack creatures by moving onto their square during your turn. But if you allow an enemy to sit next to you and stay there for their turn, they will attack you and you can only take a few hits before ending your entire run. There is so much room for error here. If two enemies land on you, you can only attack one. So if you decide to follow through with that attack, I mean, you're guaranteed to take some damage. So it's best to just dash away and try to reset that encounter. The further you progress, you'll run into all kinds of new enemies that can attack in all different kinds of ways or stage hazards that might prevent you from moving to a space to escape and so much more. And you're trying to do all of that as quick as you can because you are rewarded for killing things as quick as possible. If you spend too long trying to line up attacks, you'll lose momentum on the bar and earn less rewards. And that means... When you go to the shop, you'll be broke and you won't be able to buy those valuable upgrades, special abilities, or even buy more health back. This game is tough and you need to get good at reading several moves ahead of the enemies. And I'm having a lot of stressful fun playing this one. You could say, I'm ever trying. <laughs> <clears throat> Nostalgia and all of that aside, I saved my absolute personal favorite to last. Death's Door. I absolutely adore this game, pun intended. Adore, you get it. When it dropped on Xbox in July of last year, I was tempted, but I waited. I knew just by looking at it, it was the perfect game to come to Switch, and it eventually would. A 2021 Best Indie Game Award nominee, and it's easy to see why. Set in a beautifully bleak world full of doorways to a land filled with twisted creatures, countless secrets, and weird characters you'll meet along the way. The gameplay is sharp and precise, with different meanings melee weapons, arrows, and magic to overcome the wide array of beasts and demigods your little crow will have to face along the way. While many of the enemies around the world may present a quite a difficult challenge, requiring you to slash, dodge, and aim with super quick reaction timing, it's the brilliant epic boss battles that will truly give you a run for your life. And since you are a reaper who works for the reaping commissioning headquarters, it's your job to bring these souls into your higher-ups, otherwise you might get fired. But to be fair, it doesn't seem like the kind of job that would have a ton of benefits. The game has been praised for its mechanics, simplicity, difficulty level, and often likened to Zelda and Dark Souls games. And I love one of those. I just don't want to ruin anything else about the game for any of you. So if you're up for the challenge, grab the game and start bringing in all those souls for processing. Every time I make one of these videos, I get comments and tweets like, rest in peace my wallet. I hope that happened to you today as well. I hope I managed to find something for you that you go and try out and play. I love making these videos for so many reasons, but they're almost always indie games. So if there is anything that you like that you want to check out, you might find a new experience you adore while also helping out a small indie team towards their next big creation that you might love. But thank you for watching. Leave a comment down below with what game you love the most in the video or what game I should look at next. Like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and maybe check out my Twitch streams. You know, you a little fake. Dakey, Dakey fan.